When we first set off from the UK three years ago, we didn't have a water maker. It was a conscious decision not to get one, as we just didn't think we would need it until we got somewhere more remote than the Med. We couldn't have been more wrong. When you're cruising, you want to stay out. Going into a marina becomes a very rare event, and water sometimes gets very hard to get. Also for us, less than a year into our cruising life, we were locked down at anchor for three months in the Marmanor, Spain, and water became a real issue. Having a water maker became the number one priority, so the research started. There's heaps of information online. Some of the tests may be a bit biased, but there's good information in the forums, and of course, I spoke to lots of fellow sailors over the course of a year or more so it was possible to whittle down the contenders. But you do have to decide what sort of watermaker you want. One of the first decisions is whether to go for mains or DC. For us, the choice was clear. We'd actually just removed our generator. It was nothing but trouble, and these days with super efficient, totally quiet and ultra-reliable solar, we have a thousand watts, and the benefit of lithium batteries about to be fitted, the choice was clear for us. But even for sailors with generators, don't imagine that AC is automatically the best option. Take our friends Paul and Debbie and Roman and Ali. They have the same boats, Fontaine Pajot catamarans, but kit it out slightly differently. You set them up slightly differently. I mean, I know one's got a, a mains water maker, one a DC water maker, those sorts yep. of, you know, slight differences in solar, those sorts of things. What's, what, between you, what's, what's working best? Um. I think Roman would agree on the water maker, should have been 12 volt, mm -hmm. because I'll be making water all day today and the solar will be powering it, so it doesn't cost you anything to do yep. it, you haven't got yep. to start anything up. But if you're going DC, you want efficiency to avoid overtaxing the boat's DC systems. And the figures don't lie. Take this comparison from Practical Sailor. Five water makers and their draw at 12 volts. Spectra is super low draw, but of course the important thing is how much water they make with that power, and that's best displayed as watts per gallon. This shows Spectra to be four times more efficient than much of the competition. They always seem to be at the top of people's lists for trusted manufacturers for reliability as well, and it's got good worldwide support, which is important for us. So we took a trip to Trend Marin, the main dealers for Turkey in Istanbul. It's Cape Horn Extreme. We have 56 litres production yeah. hourly. But that's taking about 90 yes. amps. Yes, bravo. We can kind yeah. of think, speak about it. Yeah. The, 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 the energy consumption is more, two times more than the Ventura. Yes. And there are manual ones. Yes. And we have a new line in the Spectra, remote manual. Remote manuals have such a remote that you can remotely start and stop and you can make fresh water flush remotely. And the capacity, also this remote one, 53 litre per hour. And of course the consumption comes up to 18 amps. Yes. But yes. We, have, we have simple questions for, for uh, recommending the, the yeah. right water maker okay. water. So How many people on, people, yeah. on board? First one is yeah. that. And then what is the energy that you can reserve to make water on board? And of course the tank capacity you have. So if you answer these questions right, and you can easily get the right model. Yeah. So I think in your uh, two person on board and the tank capacity and the energy you have, it yeah. looks Ventura 200 Venture, yeah. and the remote one is perfect. Suited. Yeah, okay. So I mean the other, we could have gone for the Cape Horn, you yes. were saying, because that's got two yeah, pumps, so you Cape can run just one Brown, pump. Steve. Cape yeah. Horn is a, I like Cape Horn. And uh, because in the Ventura we have only one seawater inlet module but here we have two pumps and two modules what it means to the owner they can make it one module run so they have a ventura yeah. 200 liter yeah. 10 amp with a 12 volt consumption yeah. and you have more people on board and you have more energy yeah. in a limited time you get more more water you can work the second pump and it can easily yeah. Uh, produce more okay. than 55 litres per hour. It is more money, of course. Though. Yes, <laughs> but not two times more. Not so two it's, times so more. it's saving a little bit of money going for the But it's very gentle and it's very uh, small. Yeah. And and of course, we can also we should speak about it, the dimensions of the system. Yes. So two pumps yes. and a big membrane because it's relative, relative yeah. to the output. So we have a bigger membrane 
with the vent with the cape on, but we have a small one with the Ventura. So Ventura is very easy to fit. Yeah. Very easy. And the power consumption is is, is like a joke. <laughs> it's yeah, it's amazing. Well, uh, ten hours, well, ten hours, ten hours, absolutely incredible. Yeah. One of the main of reasons I, I really like the Spectra is the Park Pump, which is, is this bit here. This yeah. is the uh, special for the uh, Spectra. This is the innovative side of our system. This is Clark Pump, mm -hmm. and the Clark Pump is the reason why we have so less energy consumption. Yeah. And the Clark Pump, what we are produce, where we are providing to the boat owner, we tell the owners that. 10% of the seawater supply turns to fresh water. So you don't need to make any adjustment for it, for the pressure regulation. Yeah. You don't need to make any regulation. It's just a constant output and a variable pressure inside. You don't do anything. Yeah. So it constantly gives 10% of the inlet seawater as an output to you. So it's very simple. Just get the water in and to the system. And also I think we need to speak about after the system, of course we give the production to the tank, but we also, Spectra uses the discharge line, yeah. because discharge line still had the pressure. Yeah. So and that's what's that's no, what's powering the Clark pump, yes? Yeah, and making it so it's it's really got no, a load helping of, the because it's reusing the energy. Reusing the energy. Yeah. So that is really creating a great yeah. difference for yeah. the energy side. Yeah. Um, so you've got water coming in, an accumulator, yeah, we got water and then in, a five micron filter. Yeah, in yeah. here we, we have, of course, in we have a sea strainer mm -hmm. yes. in, in, in the package yes. we have. Yeah. In, in a so sea strainer first, then a five micron and, filter. And a five micron filter. How long does that last? This depends the water you use. Yeah. If, uh, if the water is dirty, you need to change it so often. But check it because it's, it's very important for you. And use the, the original one because it, it yeah. creates some problems in the pump. So please use that. But the, the, for the Spectra filters, you can use, you can wash them, wash them a yeah. couple of times yeah. and you can use again. Yeah. Yeah. So you were talking to me before about um, how you would the best way to use this. So you're yeah. saying that really you're, it's best to, to yeah. run it every day if you can. Yes. If, with normally with a normal f uh, system, if you leave it for, for more than a week, you, you either need to, to, to then the flush system, it again yeah. or, or pickle it if you're leaving it for longer, yeah? yeah? If you leave it more than, a, more than a week, of course it depends the environment you are living, yeah. the temperature. Yeah. How high, that bad. Okay, yes. So, we, we can speak generally a, a week. Yeah. If you use... Because you bacteria know, is growing uh, in there if you leave inside, it too long. So it is consuming more energy, products yeah. produce less and a smell, and yeah. which you don't like. Of course. So, what we advise generally, use every day if possible. If you, and, and, and make a fresh water flush after every use. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you can't use it a week, then you need to make, let's show it here, fresh water flush every week. Yeah. Every week, but if you, if you can't come on board, then you need to put a chemical in. Yeah. But Spectra is giving you another solution. It's patented. Yes. This Spectra on ZI, and I want to show you the So Z. it's an, a new type yeah, of filter. It is. It is just, you, we just get the, a carbon filter case out. Yeah. This is a, a new case coming with this electric supply system. Mm -hmm. We put it in and this is giving when you make a uh, fresh water flush, when you do, it sends the silver ions in the system. Yeah. So it keeps the system fresh to one month. So the unit for us was the Ventura 200 remote model. The remote being the switch which just controls a simple solenoid but it did add a Z-ion filter, as having a month rather than a week between safe use seems like a good idea. The remote version is necessary because it's going to go under the bed here and I don't want to be taking all this off every time I want to use the water maker. Uh, so that's one of the beauties of this, just having this simple version of a remote. It's not a fully automated system, so it hasn't got that complexity. It's just got the button, so that's going to be great. It's easy to fit as well, but we are going to get it fitted by Spectra. Uh, one, because we've got to deal with them. They've given us a good price on the Spectra in return for the video, but also it's actually good to get it professionally fitted because because you can then get the uh, year's guarantee extended to two years and actually it's a lifetime guarantee on the Clark pump as well so that's worth having. I did send a drawing of where the unit would be going. This meant they'd have an idea of what they're up against and two weeks later, bright and early, they arrived to put it in.
I have to admit, it was nice not being the one cramming myself into small spaces, and the guys had everything in and tested in a day. There's a whole procedure to go through, purging the sterile liquid that's in there for storage, and then making sure the whole system is operating as it should, has the correct flow rates, and the water is pure. So the guy's got it all done in a day. You can see I've uh, done a really good job here. Things are always more difficult uh, and more time consuming than you think. So they did really well to, to pack it all in. I'll, I'll take you through what the different components are. So if we start with the feed pump module, which is up against the bulkhead here, that needs to really be just above the water line, uh, ideally. If the higher you have it, the harder the pump's gonna have to work to get water through, and you want sort of good pressure, good flow all the way through it. This one sort of, it's just about on the water line wherever it is here, so, so that's okay. Gotta make sure you've got enough room to, to get the filter off. This is all one unit here, and so this is the thing that you've gotta sort of look for a place to, to fit that is at that position, you know, sort of on or just above the water line. It's taking its feet from the seacock which in our case is in the engine room it's the one that I used to have for the uh, generator in there so that's uh, quite useful it's a three-quarter inch one they want you know at, at least half inch three-quarter inch is better so that's nice uh, and it's going to bring the water into here via a strainer uh, so from there you've got the pump here that which is a shore flow pump uh, it's all the same sort of pump that you use for uh, your domestic water on a boat but this is going to be used for long periods of time so it's got a fan on it it's got a heat sink on it going to make sure that it's not going to overheat uh, water goes from there through the five micron filter those uh, uh, octave were saying just make sure you do change them regularly it sort of depends on the water you're in but you know you keep an eye on that and you can uh, wash those two or three times you could take it out and just give it a with a soft brush a little uh, brush over and put it back in and uh, you know extend the life of them that way but the main feed then comes off and around and uh, into this unit which obviously is the sort of heart of it here which is the membrane and the clark pump on top now this you know it's a big bulky unit uh, it's not that heavy you, um, it's, it's solidly mounted it's got some nice uh, sort of feet on the bottom some anti-vibration type uh, feet on it but this you can mount anywhere doesn't matter how high it is you can even in any direction upside down whatever you like so when you're looking at spaces you know all these are modular things you can put them where you want it's only the the feed pump unit that you sort of definitely need to get sort of somewhere just above the water line this you know you could put it on the roof if you wanted you can have it anywhere you want and um, it's just pipes to run between it so you know if you are really pushed for space then there might be a cupboard that maybe this could go in upright and that would be absolutely fine um, here it's good because you know it's all together so it makes things easy we've got the brine outlet here it can actually be taken from either side there's a blank on this side as well so that needs to go to an outlet now that needs to be just above the water line somewhere and again we were very lucky because having taken the generator out there's a nice output just back here where the generator exhaust used to be and as you can see in here it's quite a big pipe but they've managed to still get an adapter to uh, to put that through so all the uh, all the brine will go back through there it's got a quick release on it as well so when you're doing uh, servicing on this or you know putting chemicals in anything like that uh, you saw them use it when they they first commissioned it you just unplug that and it comes with a, a little tail end that you can put in a bucket uh, to be able to do that. Uh, the fresh water comes in this little pipe here so it's a little little black pipe um, and there's an outlet from the accumulator that comes round uh, just to smooth that flow out a little bit and it goes to uh, the flow meter here and then there's a gauge as well for, for pressure so you can see your, fl your rate of flow and you can see your pressure through that. On the back of it just in here you can't really see it is a little valve that I can move up and down uh, and what that does is either divert it to come out of here so when you first start it up you'll be putting this in a cup running some through using your uh, ppm meter uh, to see how saline the, the solution is making sure that it's going right down to the right level and once it has you can then just throw the valve and that diverts it into the uh, into the main tank so there's another pipe from there that comes through and goes into our tanks so that's normal use and then you need to obviously flush the system and that's why i've got the remote up here this would normally all be obviously covered up i only need to get to this for for maintenance uh, or changing filters 
Um, uh, and I would do it from here. You can just stop it and then press flush and it's set to flush for three minutes. You can change that if your pipe runs are very short and that for the, for the boat it might not need a full three minutes. So uh, you can test it by testing the salinity coming out and set it to, to what you, know, you need for your actual boat, which I'll do with this one. But uh, yeah, it'll go for whatever time you've, you've set that for and then stop. And that's you know, as easy as that. And what happens with the flush, obviously with this one, is it's going through the Z-ion. Uh, filter here. So that means it's it's just not like the normal carbon filter. The carbon filter is there to take any uh, chlorine out of your tank water because if you've filled the, the tanks with dock water at any time you'll have some chlorine in there and that will kill the membrane so you need that uh, carbon filter. So this has got that but it's also got the electronics on here to have this extra thing which basically puts silver ions into the whole system. It only runs when you're flushing so for the time that you're flushing it's powered up uh, and it has a constant current and, and changes the voltage on these two electrodes in there, floods the whole of this system with silver ions. It's something that people have used for years as a, as a, a way of completely sterilizing something so you know it should then get rid of any bacteria that's, that's here in the, uh, in the membrane sections and, and that's why you can leave it basically for a month before doing anything with it rather than a week so you know I just think it's a really good thing. So just to make it easier to visualize the plumbing here's the layout. We have the pump module, the pre-filter and the membrane which includes the Clark pump under the bed. The gauges and the remote switch need to be in easy reach so they're out where we can get to them. We also have a through hull inlet and an outlet above the water line nearby. So during normal operation, the seawater comes into the pump module and is driven around the system. It goes through the 5 micron filter and into the membrane. There's a small tee off for the pressure gauge. The piston in the membrane forces seawater through. 90% of this water is expelled through the outlet. And 10%, the bit that makes it through the membrane, is fresh water and goes through the flow meter to a manual three way valve. We fitted ours behind the meter as it was an easy place to get to. The valve controls if the water goes to the line for testing or if it's allowed to go through to the tank. Flushing is different. Hit the flush button on the remote and the solenoid will switch the input on the pump module from seawater to fresh water. This comes from any pressurised supply on your boat. Ours is teed off from the sink in the aft heads. From there the fresh water is fed through the pre-filter and membrane and then onto the output. Run for about five minutes, this should clean the system and make sure it's fresh water, not seawater, that's left sitting in the system. Spectra recommend this shouldn't be left longer than a week without either flushing or using again. I know many people who leave this much longer as it's a tough regime to stick to if you're away from your boat. And the alternative is to put chemicals into the system when you leave it, which can be expensive and is a bit of a faff. So we've gone for the Z-ion filter in place of the standard carbon filter, which gives us a month. So we should be able to stick to the recommended intervals easily. So that's it. This is um, you know, what's involved in plumbing one of these. Let's start it up and see how she goes. So yeah, to start it, we've, we've got the panel up here. So that's all right. you need to, to get to is the panel up here. Um, but you do, before you start it, have to make sure the stopcock's open, which is in the engine room. OK, OK. Um, so yeah, once yep. that's done, the start button. Okay, great. And there she goes. The other thing you want to check. And can I cook with that then? The water going in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is going to be salty to start with. So there's a little um, switch in here as well, which has to be up, because that's we're just going to siphon some off just to test it. Right. Uh, once it's okay, we then divert it to the, to okay. the tank. You don't want to put the first bit in because that might be a bit salty, and it's the stuff that's sitting in there. Sure, sure. So sure. you know, it might have. Yeah, you know, it depends so, on how long it's. So in. basically, I'm here as a taster. You are. But I will test it first. I won't make you drink really? salty water. <laughs> <laughs> so it comes with a little salinity meter. Okay. So we have a look at that. And they reckon anything below 750 parts per million is okay to go into your tank. Okay. I mean, it, should, it should be better than that. So okay. we fill the glass and see it just needs to be below 750. So just need enough in there basically to, right. to test. And we put the meter in and see what it says. And it says 104. 107, okay. around about there, just over 100, so that's really low, so that's fine. So now we can hit the button here, Ooh. and it turns it around, so it's not coming out of there anymore. Okay, going in the tank. It's filling our tanks. I better taste tanks. it though, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's all about here. No, it shouldn't be salty. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> 
Wow. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, no, it's really clear. It's almost like spring water. It hasn't got any... I was expecting a mineral taste, to be honest. Well, no, that's the point. There's nothing. no minerals in There's it. It takes in everything it. out. It doesn't just take bacteria out and dirt out. It takes yeah. everything. So any salts, any heavy metals, anything. There is nothing left There's in There is nothing in there. That is just water. Wow. It's really nice. Yeah, it is, actually. I just think that's coming out of this harbour. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Oh wow. Well, but if it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter because yeah. oh, it's completely clean by the time it comes out. It makes absolutely no difference. Well, it looks lovely and clear, but is it good for you? Well, we know it's slightly more aggressive with metals. Uh, I'm not putting it in heating systems, engine, that sort of stuff. But obviously the main thing is uh, what's it like to drink? Is it going to be OK to drink long term? Well, there's lots of uh, reports out there online and I've read quite a few now, uh, some from the World Health Organization. Well, the general consensus is you get everything you need from your food. And if you're really worried about it, put a bit of Himalayan sea salt on your chips. Apparently this has got pretty much every mineral you uh, can think of in there. And of course, it's not just water that's got minerals, beer has too. Uh, in fact, if you uh, talk to an Irishman, they'll tell you this stuff, it's got pretty much everything you need to survive. Well, I hope there's been some uh, interesting information in this film. Do remember to like and subscribe and all the usual stuff. Uh, and we do have a website, of course, with lots of information. There'll be extra information on there. And we'll sort of do some updates as we go along to you know, how this works in real life. It'll be in the episodes as well. It's actually running at the moment. Can't really hear it above the wind noise here. It's very quiet, so, so that's good. But we'll do some tests on what it's like to live with and, and if it lives up to its power needs as well. I can't test it here because we're just changing over to our lithium batteries so uh, I need to get the monitoring sorted and I'll do some long-term testing with that so uh, do check back thanks for watching